everybody. Peter Greenberg here with you on this uh, Thursday in September, the second Thursday of September 2022. Hope you survive Labor Day weekend. Lots of things to talk about about that. Welcome to our weekly global travel update. You know the drill. If you've got some questions or comments, send them right in. We'll do our best to answer them. Lots of things to talk about. Uh, first and foremost, I mentioned Labor Day weekend. Would you believe the TSA reports more people were screened at U.S. airports last weekend than on Labor Day 2019? So a lot of people look at those numbers and say, oh, we're we back to normal. We're not even close to normal. We're still in the abnormal stage. There were still hundreds of flight delays and cancellations uh, in the last hurrah of summer. So now we wait and see what the airlines are going to do as we enter the fourth quarter. We already know a couple of things they're going to do. They're slashing their flights. They're adjusting their schedules downward in a rapid way. Uh, I, I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, American Airlines slashing 31,000 flights for the month of November alone. And that's a little crazy. Uh, now, see behind me? Want to know where I am? All right. It's, uh, it's an interesting location because it's one of six micro states in Europe. I'm going to give you one of them because that's where I am. By the way, the Royal Castle is right, right behind me. Uh, it's Liechtenstein, or Liechtenstein, if you're doing it the right way. And uh, what are the other five microstates? Anybody know? That's not the trivia question, but I might as well make it one today uh, because they're all small. One, Liechtenstein, one of the smallest countries in the world, but it's got great medieval castles and alpine valleys uh, and picture postcard villages. I'm not kidding. And let's not forget the postage stamps. I grew up collecting stamps. And Liechtenstein was a great supplier of that. This country distinguished itself by figuring out a way to issue a postage stamp for people just breathing. I mean, they were issuing stamps left and right. Collectors love them, and they still do. Uh, we'll talk about that at another time, but uh, I'm happy to be back here. It's a, it's a very small country. It's a very manageable country. We're actually shooting one of my PBS specials here. And as you can see, we're talking to you from here. Uh, now, back to the TSA and the numbers. Uh, it's interesting to note that at the same time this happened, you remember the DOT, the U.S. Department of Transportation, announced their new dashboard for consumers that you can go on the U.S. DOT website and find out what you're entitled to, entitled being a word used in quotes, in the event of a flight delay or cancellation. Well, it really differs between airlines. Every airline announced a policy. Nine out of the 10 major airlines in the U.S. did announce they were trying to preempt DOT rulemaking, if you want to know the truth. They announced new procedures for taking care of you if your flight's delayed or canceled. They're not really new procedures. Every airline's had them, but now they're codifying them in a way that's more formal and applies to everybody, not just mega million milers or people who are dressed in a jacket and tie. Uh, now, what does it mean? In most cases, if your flight's delayed, they're going to get you a meal voucher. If it's, if it's really delayed, they're going to get you a hotel room. This is the principle of it. And of course, if it's canceled, you get the hotel room as well. Will they book you on another flight? Well, that rule has been in place for years as well. It used to be called Rule 240. Now it's called Rule 120. I'll talk about that in a second. But here's the problem. Every airline interprets the new procedures differently in terms of compensation amounts. So for example, if United delays your flight and has to get you a hotel room, how much money will they get you to get that hotel room if they can't find one for you? In United's case, it's about $200. Delta, they cap it at $100. Good luck trying to find a hotel room at three in the morning in Chicago when every flight's been canceled. You're not, and even if you find one, it's not going to be hundred dollars. Then comes the area of reimbursement. Who gets reimbursed? Who doesn't? It remains to be seen. American doesn't even list a limit or a cap on what they'll reimburse. So we're still in a brave new world here. It's better than nothing, but you need to know that's the first thing. The second thing is, of course, all that kicks in with one exception. If it's a weather delay or a weather cancellation. So now let's define the word weather. How many of you have been in airport A where it's beautiful weather and you see your plane on the ground and it's been there for a while and your flight's either delayed or canceled because of weather? So you call your next best friend or your relative in the destination city that you're supposedly heading to and you ask, hey, how's the weather? Beautiful sunny day. So where's the weather? Is the airline lying to you? And by the way, in most cases, they're actually not. They're telling the truth. What they're not telling you is the whole truth. They're not putting it in proper context or perspective. Because 
the weather forecasters might be able to see a weather front moving into your destination city that's going to hit with with very big winds right about the time you're scheduled to land and they want to avoid a situation where you're circling for you know for 45 minutes and then have to divert to another airport because you're low on fuel or in the case of a connecting flight they can watch the weather form in those mid connecting cities so what do you need to do you need to call the airline and ask them what the weather's like where the plane is that's coming to get you to fly you where you want to go where the weather is in a connecting city, if that flight is connecting, and of course the weather in the city that you're departing from. At least forewarned is forearmed, and then if all else breaks down, uh, and it really was weather, then all that other stuff doesn't kick in. The airlines are off the hook, right? We're talking about controllable delays, delays in the control and the responsibility of the airline. So that's where we are right now with that. Uh, now, some good news, airfares are coming down. I told you they would, they are. This is the week you're going to start seeing it happen. Actually, we started seeing it about 10, to get, 10 days ago when Southwest announced a quick fare sale starting at $59 for flights booked from now till February of 23. They just announced another quick sale. By the way, it expires today. That if you book one round trip, how about this? If you book one round trip on Southwest Airlines today, because the deal expires today, you get to fly a companion free between January 1st and March of next year as many times as you want, just have to pay the taxes. Not a bad deal. Remember, it expires today. But we'll see more of that stuff start sliding out with Delta, American, and United as they take a look at their forward-looking bookings and seeing that they're not very strong. That's especially true where I am right now in Europe. We're still seeing airfares round trip from New York to, to let's say, Lisbon for $500. That's pretty good. And you'll see more of that coming up in the weeks ahead. Now, the one place you won't see it, of course, is Thanksgiving. There are no news buildings there. We all know when Thursday of Thanksgiving is. We also know when Wednesday before Thanksgiving is. We also know they made a movie about that. Planes, trains, and automobiles for a reason. So if you want to go to that obligatory dysfunctional get-together known as Thanksgiving, then what you need to do is try to be creative here and book yourself the Thursday before Thanksgiving or the Friday before Thanksgiving. And then don't come back on the Sunday after, come back on the Tuesday after. Now, if you can't do that, then do what I used to do, right? As long as you understand my definition of the obligatory dysfunctional family get-together. Here's what I used to do. 6 a.m. flight on Thanksgiving morning, which would get me to the festivities in time to cut the turkey, carve the turkey, and have my relatives push all the bad emotional buttons. And then on Friday morning, Gotta go. Nobody's flying on Friday. Why? They're all they're all in their cars trapped at the mall, right? So I satisfy my obligations on a cheap flight coming in a Thursday, on a really cheap flight flying back on Friday, and then once I return, I get to watch as much bad football as I want. Yay. Anyway, with the exception of Thanksgiving, because Christmas is really sort of staggered every year, with the exception of Thanksgiving, you're going to see a buyer's market between now and and the middle of February, almost to the end of February of 2023. Now, here's one area where the fares are not going down. Well, first of all, first class. American Airlines is poised to end first class on domestic flights and international flights in the next year, which is an interesting development. Do you know why American Airlines had first class flights, really first class flights, not business class, on the transcons? We're talking about three class service, right? First class, business class, and coach, or premium economy, maybe four cabins. The reason why they had it was the lucrative contracts they had with the Screen Actors Guild, the Directors Guild, and the Writers Guild out in California, where it was part of their contracts that their members flew first class. So they had, they had deals with all the studios. Well, these days, in the wake of the pandemic, not a lot of people are flying, and a lot of them are not flying commercially. So there go a lot of those first class deals not viable for the airlines, it's going to get away. However, internationally, first class is bigger than ever and more expensive than ever. You want to go from Los Angeles to Melbourne? Try $15,000. Oh, but they throw in a 20-minute massage at the lounge. Yippee. You want to fly Emirates to Dubai from New York? Try $30,000. But they give you unlimited Dom Perignon and my favorite, unlimited caviar. But if they don't show up with at least a ton of caviar, it doesn't work out for me. But the whopper of all whoppers is the airline in Abu Dhabi, Etihad. You want to fly from New York to Abu Dhabi? 
round trip? Are you fastening your seatbelts? $64,000. Why? Because you've just purchased your own three-bedroom suite on the A380. They call it the residence, right? You get your own bedroom, your own sitting room, and your own bathroom and shower. Oh, yeah, you get your own butler, and you get your own menu, and then you get your own therapist as you try to explain to your therapist later on why you spent $64,000. But that's another story. Anyway, that's our first class airfare report for the day. Now, uh, let's get to some of your comments. But before we do that, you know what? We have a special guest. Uh, his name is Roger Sedalek. He's born and raised here in Liechtenstein. He's a, he's a musician. And I thought it only appropriate, Rod, Roger, come on in. He's coming. There you see the guitar. Remember, we, we had the mariachis in Mexico. Now we've got Roger in Varus. And Roger's going to first play we have to do this appropriately, the Liechtenstein National Anthem. I'm moving this over so we can all see it. Go for it. Recognize that song? It's the Liechtenstein National Anthem. It's also God Save the Queen. How appropriate that we play it today in honor of Queen Elizabeth, who is not doing very well. We wish her all the best uh, at this uh, stage in her life. She's 96. Uh, but imitation the sincerest form of flattery, the National Anthem of Liechtenstein came from the Brits. <laughs> you stole yeah, it. You stole it. All right. Ah, but Roger, you're also a great guitarist and a jazz musician. Why don't you play us something that you wrote? <laughs> Oh, that was good. <laughs> Roger Sedalek right here in Liechtenstein. Before we lose you, I mean, this is a small country. It's very small. And yeah. you're born and raised here. I'm born and raised here, yes. When people come here, what's the biggest surprise to them? Oh, that is actually, you can walk through the country in one day, probably. But if you if you adapt the, the mountainside, it's a little bit wider. But it still has a lot to offer for this little country. You know, for travelers, I would say uh, hiking would be, one it's a big hiking there. destination. It's really good for hiking. You got the mountains. We got the mountains. Beautiful. By the way, they don't have all the mountains. If you look this way, the mountains belong to Switzerland. There's Austria over there. We have a nice view over, if you're high enough, you can look over three countries or four even. You know. Wow. Amazing. Cool. Well, thank you for coming by. Thank you. Adding a little flair to the actual broadcast. Thank you so much. Roger Sudalek, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for doing that. Thank you so much. And back to you guys, by the way. I want a little piece of housekeeping. Uh, this coming Tuesday uh, in Washington, D.C., I will be co-hosting a CBS News town hall. It's a summit on the current state of air travel. Uh, there's the poster right there. I'll be co-hosting with Major Garrett, the chief Washington correspondent for CBS News. It will become our radio show that you will hear a few days later. So listen up for it starting the weekend of September 17th. But on September 13th, I'll be in Washington, D.C. with the key stakeholders in the air travel industry. We'll have Robin Hayes, the CEO of JetBlue. We'll have Admiral Pekoski, who is the administrator for the TSA. We'll have the head of the pilots union, the head of the flight attendants union. We'll have Karen Becker, the CEO of Clear. We'll have Sean Donahue, the, the CEO of the Dallas-Fort Worth Airport. 
And we'll have Charlie Leoka from Travelers United. Of course, we know him. He's been on our show before, a consumer advocacy, advocacy group for travelers, of course. So we'll have more about that. I just want to let you know that. And you'll be able to hear that entire operation on the 17th of September as part of our Eye on Travel three-hour national radio show. All right. Now let's go say hello to a few people. I'm going to scroll up there. Ah, okay. Uh, Harriet and Jim are saying hi from Nicosia and Cyprus. All right. Ben is in Miami. Sue's in uh, Bellingham, Washington. Peter Christensen. Ah, greetings from your alma mater in beautiful Madison, Wisconsin. They won their football game last week. They're probably going to win again this week because they're doing these tune-up games, right? Last week, I, I think it was, I forget who they played, but they, they killed them. This week, they're playing Washington State. And then in a couple of weeks, it's not going to be pretty. I think they're playing Ohio State. We'll talk about that later. It's going to be sad. Uh, all right. Zora saying, uh, I booked, I got my ticket using my 103,000 points, uh, Capital One Visa plus three, 1,300 in cash, the total 2,300 free economy class to Santiago, Chile. $2,300 for economy class to Santiago? Something's wrong there. Uh, wow. Interesting. I'm going to have to look at that. All right. Write me a little bit longer letter with the details, Zora, because a $2,300 ticket and coach to Santiago, Chile is not really what we have in mind here. Uh, Catherine's saying hi from San Diego. Uh, here we go. Ah, now you guys are guessing what are the microstates of Europe? Well, one of them is Liechtenstein. I'll give you a hint. The second one, Vatican City. The third, is Andorra. Did I just give you the finger? <laughs> the fourth. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Andorra. Uh, the fourth is San Marino. The fifth is Luxembourg, but nobody ever gets the sixth. All right. See if you get it. All right. Susie's saying hi from uh, Daytona. David's in Monaco. I'm Dallas. Uh, okay. And by the way, whoever gets Luxembourg, they're wrong too. It's Monaco. We're still missing one, right? So it's Vatican City, Liechtenstein, Andorra, San Marino, and Monaco. What's the sixth? Okay, Adam's saying hi from Tanzania. Uh, Joy's saying, going on a cruise in December, do I recommend paying your gratuities in advance? This is crazy. There are some cruise lines that have no tipping policy allowed. Uh, but you know what happens on cruise lines that have no tipping policy? I tip anyway. Uh, usually uh, the cruise lines that have a no tipping policy, the, the staff is even better. And you want to reward them for their service. Uh, so if you want to pay your gratuities in advance, I, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. Look, you want to reward somebody, but not in advance. And then if they do a really good job, tip them more. I mean, that's what I would like to do. Okay. Okay. Ray Bixson got it wrong. Ha <laughs> ha. Sorry, Ray. You guessed Montenegro. Wrong. Okay. Lisa's listening in from Kigali in Rwanda. We love Kigali. Melissa's saying from Reno, 95 days until I leave for Egypt. Any idea when I might contact the tour, the restoration room at Gem? Yeah, do it now. Call, a, call one of the hotel concierges. Let's say at the Four Seasons, there are two of them, by the way, in Cairo or the Ritz Carlton right there on the Nile. Uh, and get them to book it for you. Don't wait. Okay. Uh, oh, I see what you're saying. The Four Seasons resident says they cannot help as opening date is not set. Of course they can help. It's called make a phone call. And if they won't help you, call the Ritz. And if they can't help you, call the Sheridan. It's going to happen, right? Keep in, make, Maintain a relationship with that concierge. Call them every five days. They'll get in. They'll, they will get you in. That's what concierges do. Okay. That's what good concierges do. Okay. All right. Here we go. Uh, Hassan is saying hello from Tanzania. Thank you for the royal tour. Well, you're welcome. Still airing. Uh, okay. Uh, Dorothy says good morning from toasty Pleasant Hill, California. To my friend Lee Donosky, who's up in Napa. She called me yesterday to tell me the temperature had hit 114. That's beyond abnormal and scary. Uh, okay. Gail's saying hello from uh, New Jersey. Okay. Let's see. And she's guessing Vatican City, Andorra, San Marino, Luxembourg, and Monaco. Wrong. Luxembourg is not 
one. Uh, okay. Uh, Karen saying hi from Vance in France. We love it. Colleen is saying, checking in from Treburton Beach in Brittany. Okay, please have the butter and the oysters for me. You can't get better. Um, rain arrives only at night, so daily hikes are gorgeous. Boulders are slippery. Who told you to go on any boulders? So I'm glad I took your advice and didn't try to get my trek poles through TSA. <laughs> well, there you go. You did okay. Okay. Uh, Julie saying, well, I was just in Liechtenstein heading to South Africa this week, and I hope you enjoyed Liechtenstein. It's great. It really is. Uh, look, only 38,000 people are here. There's a soccer game tonight in the stadium. Think about this. And it's a championship game tonight. There will be more people in the stadium than live in the country. Wow. Okay. Hey, here's uh, Ham Hamasi is uh, tuning in from Arusha in Tanzania, the base of Kilimanjaro. Uh, okay, keep on going here. Here in Colorado, and it's just as warm as it's in Florida. Only issue was over an hour ago, wait, oh, over an hour, wait for the luggage, and it was not late at night. If you only had to wait an hour for your luggage, given what's going on at airports and airlines these days, uh, you win a prize for the shortest waiting time. Uh, our producer here, Anthony, I think had to wait two days for his bags. They got stuck in Chicago on his way to Zurich. But he did get them, delivered by some guy in a van named Vern. It's always some guy in a van named Vern. Uh, all right. Lillian saying hello from Nairobi. Uh, okay, here we go. Ah, Jeff saying hello from Santa Monica. I just signed up for an 11-night Atlas cruise from Ushuaia to Antarctica in late November. After the cruise, I want to spend some time in the Buenos Aires area. Well, before you do that, uh, you got to do something else. There's a restaurant in Ushuaia. You need to get there and check it out. It's called Calpe. Uh, and it's run by a family. You'll never have a better meal. Uh, and, uh, and then you can get on the ship to go to Antarctica. You'll go through the Drake Shakes. Good luck with that. But as far as restaurants in Buenos Aires, I'll give you one that I've always gone to in the days where I ate meat. It's, uh, it's in the San Telmo area. Everybody knows San Telmo in Buenos Aires. It's called La Brigada. The steak there is so tender. This sounds like a bad commercial. But the steak, the steak there is so tender, they come to your table and cut it with a spoon. I mean, unbelievable. But what you really want to do is on the market day, which is usually Saturday is better than Sunday, get up early and go to the market in San Telmo. Some really great antiques there and, and a lot of garbage too, but some really great antiques and great people watching. If you want to see some street tango, that's where it is. Uh, and of course, if you want some great seafood, not easy to find in, in Argentina, they are a state country, but what you want to do is go to the, the uh, uh, Palermo markets in the Palermo neighborhood and you'll have some great, you know, great, great food and great wine. Of course, the Malbecs. Uh, if you get a chance to go to Mendoza, it's a flight, but I'm telling you, their wine region there puts, I, I, I don't even want to say it, but it was so impressive to me, it, it wowed me more than Napa Valley. Seriously. 800 wineries, and they, they take it seriously, and it's great. Uh, and it's not just Malbec. Uh, okay. Dorothy says, I'm flying to Italy early October with a 90-minute layover in Frankfurt. I'm not a good runner. <laughs> is this timing too tight? The answer, yes, it is. Try to reschedule your flight. Seriously. I'm sure they have more than one flight a day to where you're going in Italy from Frankfurt. And in Frankfurt, you're going to be walking and climbing. The Germans may be efficient, but the word escalator has not yet seeped into their vocabulary. Okay, just saying. Okay. Uh, all right, here we go. Doris is saying, how do you think the shortage of gas will affect travel in Europe in the future? It won't, because the Europeans, just like the Americans, you know, haven't reached that tipping point where they won't use their cars. They'll do it more efficiently than we will. We're more addictive than they are. Uh, I refilled my car today. Uh, I'm driving a Renault uh, with diesel, and it was 130 bucks. All right, so it's expensive here too. Uh, Mike is saying, God save the queen. You bet. Uh, all right, let's keep going. Gina's saying hi. Gail's saying uh, hi on, on Southwest. Uh, a lot of folks in Tanzania saying hi, as they always do. We love that. Camilla's saying hi from Tucson. Uh, ah, Roger's getting some applause here from his performance. 
We appreciate that, Roger. Thank you for doing that. Uh, nice guitar solo. Gail loves it too. Okay. Uh, do I, oh, do I prefer Torino in spring or fall? The answer, fall. Always fall. September and October, the magic months in Torino. And uh, to talk about uh, wine. Uh, I just, during the, the, the Olympic Games in, in Torino, I discovered, uh, a, 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 whatchamacallit, Barb, uh, Barbo, Barbella, Barbosa. I'm going to figure it out. It starts with a B. I love it. Heavy wine, but I love it. You know what it is. That's where they make it there. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, Mary says, go Cougs. Now I know who they're playing, Washington State. We're going to beat you. We're going to beat you. I'm sorry. Wisconsin's going to prevail because after that, we get our you-know-what's kicked by people like Ohio State. Uh, okay. Robert saying Terminal C opening two weeks in Orlando. I know. And you know what? They needed it, and I'm looking forward to seeing it. Uh, okay. Mike says the Vatican. Nobody's got it yet. Gina's saying Andorra. Um, Monaco? Yeah, you got Monaco. Got San Marino. Katrina saying hi from Alabama. No, it's not a European micro state. Uh, Elizabeth says we will be in Bermuda for a short cruise. How should we send our two days? How should we spend our two days in port? Well, one of the things I love to do in Bermuda, it's going to sound silly, but near the dockyards, assuming you're docking near there, because there are two ports really that they dock in, one in Hamilton and one out near the dockyards, uh, there's an amazing gravesite. It's an amazing cemetery uh, dating back to the 1600s. And what's amazing about it, are the gravestones. Take your time, go to the cemetery, read the gravestones. Because each gravestone doesn't just say, John Doe, born this year, died this year. Each gravestone, they took meticulous care and time to tell you his story on the gravestone and how he died. He fell from the mast, he clung on for three days, he then did this, he did this, and then he died. Very interesting stories that have stood the test of time in that graveyard. I love that. Uh, okay. Okay. Ah, now, now we got some answers. All right. Congratulations to Frey, to Gail, to Jackie. Jackie, Tresh got it right. How do you like that? Um, Stan didn't get it right. Stan guessed Gibraltar. No. But the guys I just mentioned did get it right. It's Malta. So, Andorra, San Marino. Monaco, the Vatican, Liechtenstein, and Malta. There you go. All right. All right. Oh, Kathmandu's weighing in. Hello, Ram. Patty says, on Sunday, I checked flights to Paris, and the price had dropped quite a bit. Ta-da. I've been saying this. Plus, if I got Delta credit card, got additional discount plus. Over the next couple of days, I verified when I could go. Uh, and later, the fare had increased over $150. And the credit card deal is not as good. Well, surprise, surprise. When you see a deal that's good, it's law of supply and demand, grab it. Don't wait. Uh, okay. It doesn't mean that the prices won't drop again. They will. Just monitor it based on the days you want to go. Okay. My friend Peter in Kigali. Okay. I'm, I'll, I'll let you know when I'm coming, Peter. It won't be too long from now. I promise you. Michelle's saying hi. Uh, okay. Here we go. Hi there. Wondering if using trains only for touring Ireland and Scotland is a good way to go. Don't want to drive a car. It is a good way to go. Look, anytime you want to drive on the wrong side of the road, let me know so I'm not anywhere near you. I'm not going to say you're going to get into an accident. You're just going to cause a few. Take the train. Um, all right. Here we go. Greetings from San Miguel de Allende. We love San Miguel de Allende. Uh, Great artist community there. I mean, I could spend a lot of time in San Miguel. We actually did a special on it, which you can see on Travel Detective. Just go to Amazon Prime and you'll see our special on San Miguel. Speaking of which, the Royal Tours on, on Amazon Prime and Apple TV Plus, the one in Tanzania. Travel Detective Season 7 is on there. And later on this year, we're going to have the premiere of what? Hidden Canary Islands. One hour special. I'm not going to ask you to name Name all the islands today. We'll do that later. All right. Uh, here we go. Barbaresco. Thank you. It's, uh, Barolo is really the one I was looking for. Barolo is the wine in uh, Torino. Uh, 
Judy says, do I still wear a mask on flights? Uh, I don't. However, I was recently in Canada and that's still a rule. So I brought a mask and wore it. Uh, and if I'm sitting on a plane next to you and you're sneezing, causing and wheezing or coughing and wheezing, I'm going to be wearing a mask. Uh, ah, Lizette wants to know, which places should I visit in Lisbon in late November? Well, where do I begin? I love Lisbon. Uh, I'll give you three restaurants you got to go to, right? One is called Akipesh, if you like seafood. One is called Je ne sais quoi. It's a little more upscale fine dining. And then the really fun one, you want to go at night for dinner, is called Pop Sorta. It's in the timeout building. Lots of fun things to do in that building. They're on the second floor. And what's their signature dish? It's their dessert. It's chocolate mousse. And it's not served in some kind of tiny champagne cup. It's served on a plate this big with a ladle this big. So uh, be prepared. Train yourself. Get ready. Go into training for the chocolate mousse. Uh, all right. Uh, okay. Hello from Tanzania again. Uh, Evelyn now just guessed Malta. Congratulations, Evelyn. Uh, Jonah saying good morning from California. Uh, oh, Catherine wants to know, what's my favorite off the beaten path thing to do in, in Rome? It's outside of Rome, actually. It's a small town of Fuji. F-I-U-G-I, I believe is, is the correct spelling. And there's an amazing monastery there, which you can still not, not only go to, but guess what? The monks speak. You can talk to them. Uh, and you learn a lot. Okay. Okay. Uh, Rose wants to know about Panama City, but you didn't specify, Rose, if it's Panama City, Florida, or Panama City, Panama. Let me know. Uh, Okay, everybody's still guessing Luxembourg, but you're wrong. We already ended the contest, guys. Uh, all right, let's see what it says here. Going on a Greek island tour in October. How cold does it get at this time? And it may be a silly question, but do Greeks really break dishes at weddings? They used to, all right? It, was become, it became a stereotype. They don't break any dishes that I've seen lately. But there was a time when I first went to Greece in the, in the late 70s. Oh, yeah, we were throwing dishes. It was crazy. Uh, but you picked a great time of the year to go. You know why? You can breathe. This summer in Greece was wall-to-wall -wall people. At one point, I was on a ship. And you're going on a cruise. I was on a ship that got to Santorini. I refused to get off the ship. I could see from the shore. It was just out of control. So October, good time to go. It does get a little chilly at night. So you bring a little sweater or windbreaker, but you'll be fine. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, ah, Joan says, have I ever been to Mackinac Island and would you recommend it? I've been a, lot, a number of times in Michigan to Mackinac Island. Of course, you only get there by boat. It reminds me very much of where I live on Fire Island in New York because you can only get there by boat. Uh, and with the exception of fire trucks, uh, no cars, uh, horse-drawn carriages. So watch your step, if you know what I mean. But what's great about Mackinac they really kept it the way it always was. Of course, the Grand Hotel is iconic, one of the Grand Dom hotels in America. That front porch could be the longest front porch of any hotel in America with the more rocking chairs than any other hotel in America. The one thing I have to warn you about about Mackinac, for reasons that still escape me, every other store there sells fudge. And I mean lots of it. So... After a while, you can't even breathe without being shoved up something. So, it's surrounding you. Okay. Well, here's a Panama City, Panama. What a great man there. I see later this year in Colombia. Is, is a great Panamanian airline. And if you look at the work, a great way to Central and South America and parts of the Caribbean as well. So it's even cheaper by LA to Montego Bay in Jamaica going through Panama City, Panama. So the answer to your question is look at the prices now. If you like them, buy them, but go check out Copa. They're really, really good. From Florida, but now it's time for a little trivia question, which, by the way, 
is also a photo. As I show you this photo, most of you will probably guess where it was taken. Uh, when was it taken? Yep, that's me. Hammer and chisel at the ready. Where was I? And when was it taken? And then, how did I get there? Any guesses? Raymond Bixon guessed, but he already knew the answer, so he's immediately disqualified. Uh, okay. You got it. Everybody who's weighing in now, too easy. Yep, that was the Berlin Wall, 1989. I was there covering it. I actually was in London when we knew it was going to come down. When, all, when people started coming over the wall, I got on the very first flight I could get to Berlin. On the way to the airport, I stopped at a hardware store, got the hammer and chisel. And somehow... They let me on the plane, 1989. And uh, now, I, I got my pieces of the wall, and when it, was tongue, when it came time to fly back to London, my hammer and chisel were seized by the authorities. <laughs> but I kept the rocks, and they're now in a lucite frame on my wall. Berlin Wall, November 1989. Now, speaking of photos, let's go to photo of the week. All right, let's hear it for our for our winner. And our winner is I.R. Griffiths. Where is it taken? This is also an easy one. Alaska, taken on the Holland America ship, the Zwiederdam, which Holland America just celebrated its 75th anniversary. He was there for that event. And uh, bottom line, he enjoyed the cruise, sent in the photo, and uh, of course, it was overcast for some of those days. But even in overcast conditions, you can't beat shots like that. Although I have to tell you, if I showed you my picture taken in the exact same location from 25 years ago, you'd see a whole lot more ice. That is something that is uh, continuing to disturb me and anybody else who uh, is worried about global warming. But still, a great photo. Mr. Griffiths, thank you so much for sending it in. And if you think you've got a great photo of the week, you know what to do. Send it in to Peter at PeterGreenberg.com. And if we like it, guess what? We post it and you win. What do you win? The opportunity to go on the line with me right now and me celebrating you and your photo. So thanks for doing it. We really appreciate it. A uh, couple other housekeeping notes. Again, this coming Tuesday, the 13th, in Washington, D.C., the CBS News Town Hall Summit on the State of Air Travel 2022 with the head of the TSA the head of the pilot's union, the flight attendant's union, Robin Hayes, the CEO of JetBlue, the CEO of the Dallas-Fort Worth Airport, and many other people. That show will be on our radio show the following Saturday and Sunday. Check your local listings. We'll stream it live on Saturday starting at 10.05 on the 17th of September. Uh, you can do that just by logging on to our website, petergreenberg.com, hitting the radio icon at about 10.05 Eastern time, and you'll hear from English, uh, Roger Sidalek, a uh, great blues guitarist, and of course, the national anthem of Liechtenstein. Remarkable similarity to God Save the Queen. Uh, we'll discuss that later. But bottom line is, thank you, Roger. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, of course, our radio show this Saturday, check your local listings. Of course, we stream it live at 10.05 Eastern. I'll see you on the radio. I'll see you on CBS. Have a great rest of the week. Have a great weekend. And for those people in Washington, D.C., I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye, everybody.